Dawn, November 18, 2025. A deafening thunder rattles Campi Flegre. It is not from a storm, but from a very shallow earthquake of magnitude 1.8 that shakes homes awake. It is the loudest sign in a swarm of 88 recent earthquakes and fumaroles at Solfatara are now steaming at 173 degrees Celsius. Experts warn the unrest curve is rising fast. But what really happens when a volcano's cap rock is this fragile and is this the start of something Campi Flegri has not seen in centuries? A single, sharp bang slices through the quiet of dawn. Windows rattle, coffee cups tremble on kitchen tables, and nearly 80,000 people in Pozzuoli and the neighborhoods around Solfatara sit bolt upright in bed, convinced a thunderclap has struck right above their heads. But the sky is clear, and the sound is not weather, it is the earth itself. The quake that jolted Campi Flegre awake measured only magnitude 1.8. On paper, it is a minor event. In reality, the shock travels straight from the shallow crust to the surface, unleashing a noise so sudden and forceful that people describe it as an explosion, a cannon blast, a rolling thunder that seems to start beneath the floorboards and end in the air. Social media fills instantly with messages asking if people heard that bang and asking whether the walls shook and whether it was an earthquake or something else. Within seconds, the local news wires light up with reports of a quake felt and heard across the north rim of the caldera. For those living atop the restless ground, it is not the first time. The last few weeks have been filled with daily swarms, clusters of small, shallow earthquakes, each one loud enough to be heard as much as felt. But this one, at dawn, is different. The sound is sharp, the impact more immediate. The explanation lies beneath the surface. Here, the Earth's crust is thin, fractured, and saturated with pressurized steam and gas. When a fault slips or a pocket of fluid ruptures at less than two kilometers down, the energy does not just shake the ground. It punches straight into the air, creating a pressure wave that slams into buildings and bodies alike. Instruments confirm the story. Accelerometers register a spike, seismographs record a burst of high-frequency energy, and infrasound monitors where they exist pick up a pulse that matches the moment people say they heard the bang. In the hours that follow, residents check their walls for new cracks, swap stories at the bakery, and scroll through posts tagged hashtag campiflegri, searching for reassurance or warning. No major damage is reported, but the shock lingers. Each audible quake is a reminder that the ground beneath Pozzuoli is not silent, not stable, and not done. The question now hangs in the morning air. What is happening inside the volcano, and how much louder could it get? Numbers tell a story of their own. The INGV Bulletin, covering November 10th to 16th, 2025 logs, 88 earthquakes beneath Campi Flegre, most clustered in the upper few kilometers of crust. The largest in that week, magnitude 2.1, barely makes the national news, but locals know the real headline is The Swarm, a steady drumbeat of magnitude 1 to magnitude 2, events rattling windows and nerves. Just after the bulletin closes, magnitude 2.4 follows, another jolt in a growing sequence. These are not isolated tremors. They are part of a pattern that experts like Dr. Giovanni Chiodini and Dr. Luca Dauria have tracked for years shallow, frequent, and relentless. Unrest keeps rising, a measure of seismic energy and ground movement that shows no pause. Every week brings new data, more quakes, higher peaks. INGV sensors record not only the shaking, but the slow, persistent lift of the ground itself. Uplift is now measured at 2.5 centimeters per month, a rate that surpasses previous crises and shows no sign of slowing. This is not a glitch in the instruments. The numbers hold steady across different stations, confirmed by satellite and ground-based GPS. GAS readings add another layer. At the Solfatara fumarole, temperatures approach 173 degrees Celsius. That is hotter than most kitchen ovens, and it is not just heat. Gas emissions are rising too, signaling intensified interaction between the hydrothermal system and deeper magmatic fluids. Dr. Joanne Gotsman, who specializes in caldera deformation, points out that these geochemical changes are closely linked with the seismic swarms and ground uplift, reinforcing the picture of a restless system. Each bulletin arrives with the same cadence, a summary of events, 
a chart of seismicity, a note on deformation, and a warning that the situation is dynamic. The language is measured but clear. There is no evidence of calm. Instead, the data points to a volcano that is pressurizing, with every quake and every uptick in gas building toward an uncertain threshold. The numbers are not just statistics, they are the pulse of a living caldera. And right now, that pulse is speeding up. In the autumn of 1538, the world around Pozzuoli changed in ways that no one had seen before. Parish records and letters from the time describe a slow, uneasy rise of the land, first measured in inches, then feet. For decades, the ground had been swelling, pushing up buildings and fields, but the final years brought a new urgency, shallow earthquakes, some strong enough to topple walls, others so frequent they became part of daily life. Villagers wrote of nights spent outside, too afraid to sleep beneath their own roofs, and of strange sulfurous blasts that would rattle windows and scatter birds at dawn. The first explosions were not of fire, but of steam and mud. Eyewitnesses described columns of dark vapor, stones hurled into the air, and a choking rain of ash. These phiatriatic blasts, violent releases of pressurized steam, came before any sign of fresh lava. It was only after days of this turmoil that magma finally broke through. In just 48 hours, a new mountain rose from the plain, Monte Nuovo. Its cone built almost overnight, reshaping the coastline and swallowing orchards and vineyards beneath a blanket of ash and rock. What stands out in every account is the strength of the Earth's KP. The rock above the reservoir in 1538 was thick and unbroken, a solid barrier that held back pressure for years. It took relentless uplift, a cascade of earthquakes and a series of steam-driven blasts to finally breach it. The eruption sequence set a template that scientists still use today. A long period of swelling and warning signs, a final acceleration, then a sudden, dramatic release. These old parish testimonies are more than just relics. They offer a living memory of how a restless caldera can announce its intentions and how the ground itself can become both warning and weapon. The lessons of Monte Nuovo are not lost on those who study Campi Flegre now, as they measure each tremor against the pattern that once turned a quiet plain into a volcano in less than two days. Deep beneath the surface of Campi Flegre, a complex, fragile barrier separates the restless world below from the city above. This barrier, the Caprock, once acted as a solid lid, but its strength has been steadily eroded by decades of heat, gas, and repeated shaking. Modern imaging now reveals a structure riddled with weaknesses. Three-dimensional seismic tomography and resistivity surveys map out a patchwork of altered tufts and swelling clays, their properties shifting with every degree of temperature and every pulse of pressure. In places, the cap rock is nearly one kilometer thick. In others, it thins to less than 500 meters, especially near Solfatara and Pichirelli. Within this weakened shell, a single crack stretches for almost one kilometer, traced by clusters of tiny earthquakes and zones of low seismic velocity. Each small quake, each audible bang, marks another slip along this pathway, another fracture in rock that is already close to its breaking point. The deformation modeler, working with these high-resolution images, points to regions where the cap rock is not just thin, but fundamentally altered. Here, clays that once swelled and sealed now become brittle and glassy at temperatures around 200 degrees Celsius, losing their ability to hold back the pressure below. Laboratory tests show that these clay-rich layers, when heated and stressed, deform easily and fail at much lower pressures than unaltered rock. The result is a system where the old rules no longer apply. Instead of a thick, uniform lid, Campi Flegre's cap rock is now a patchwork of strong and weak, ductile and brittle, with a growing network of fractures linking the magma reservoir to the surface. Microseismic activity and resistivity lows pinpoint the most vulnerable zones, especially along that one kilometer crack. Each new event chips away at the barrier, making it more likely that pressure will find a way out, perhaps not years from now, but much sooner. The science leaves little doubt. The volcano's lid is not what it once was and the next breach may follow a path already mapped in the data.
For those who remember the 1980s, the current unrest at Campi Flegre feels both familiar and entirely new. Forty years ago, from 1982 to 1984, the ground beneath Pozzuoli rose by nearly two meters. Swarms of earthquakes rattled the city and officials evacuated 40,000 people. The crisis lasted about three years, peaking with an uplift rate close to one centimeter per month. Then, almost as abruptly as it began, the movement slowed, the swarms faded, and no eruption followed. People returned home, rebuilt, and carried on. But the numbers today tell a different story. The current crisis has stretched for nearly two decades. Since the early 2000s, the ground has lifted more than two meters, already surpassing the total from the 1980s, and the pace has quickened. Uplift now measures 2.5 centimeters per month, a rate more than double the highest seen in the previous episode. The seismic catalog fills with daily records, not just of magnitude 1 and magnitude 2 tremors, but with the largest recent quakes reaching up to magnitude 2.7. Each event is shallow, each one felt and heard by the 80,000 residents living directly above the restless caldera. The stakes are higher than ever. The so-called red zone, the area designated for emergency evacuation, holds around 500,000 people. Beyond that, the metropolitan sprawl of Naples brings the total number of people within potential impact to 6 million. The difference is not just in the numbers, but in the trend. Uplift that once slowed now accelerates. Swarms that once calmed now persist. For long-time residents, the sense of deja vu is shadowed by a new anxiety. The crisis is not pausing, and the pressure is still building. The familiar patterns of the past no longer guarantee safety. What was once a three-year ordeal is now a 20-year question with no clear answer. A phreatic eruption at Campi Flegre would not look like a wall of lava, but like a sudden, violent blast, a steam-driven explosion that hurls rocks, mud, and ash outward in all directions. Hazard models for the Solfatara and Pisciarelli sector place the most dangerous fallout zone within a radius of 500 meters to just over one kilometer from the vent. In the most energetic scenarios, ballistic fragments, blocks of solid rock, could land as far as 1.5 kilometers away, though the majority would fall much closer. The senior gas geochemist, Dr. Giovanni Chiodini, points to these numbers as the practical boundary for immediate danger. Any person or structure within that range could be struck by flying debris with little or no warning. Above the vent, an ash column could rise quickly to heights between 3 and 8 kilometers, depending on the force of the explosion and the amount of steam and gas released. This is high enough for ash to drift over the western suburbs and, under the right wind, reach as far as central Naples, though fallout would likely be light and patchy. The main threat would remain close to the vent, where heavy ash, rocks, and hot mud could rain down in the minutes after the initial blast. Toxic gases are another, less visible hazard. Carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide can surge out in short, dense clouds, hugging the ground and moving unpredictably with the wind. These pulses might last for minutes or stretch into hours, creating lethal pockets near the explosion site. People caught close to the vent would have little time to react before the air itself became dangerous to breathe. Toxic gases can be deadly within moments. The magma reservoir that feeds these events sits at an estimated depth of 3.9 to 4 kilometers, shallower than once believed and closer to the surface than in many other volcanic systems. If a phreatic blast manages to breach the weakened cap rock and clear a path upward, models suggest there is a 15 to 30 percent chance that magma could follow, rising rapidly through the damaged zone. Dr. Giovanni Chiodini and his colleagues stress that while the most likely scenario is a series of steam-driven explosions, the possibility of escalation is real. Ballistic range, ash height, gas hazard, reservoir depth, and probability define the zone where science and risk meet head-on. On Via Antiniana, the ground has become an adversary no city engineer can outsmart. Shopkeepers point to patches of road that have been torn up and repaved again and again and each time the surface buckles or cracks, sometimes within weeks. The damage is not always dramatic, but it is relentless. In some stretches, the asphalt softens underfoot after heavy rains, 
or it steams on cool mornings, hinting at the heat and gases seeping up from below. One shopkeeper standing by his shuttered storefront says that you can fix the street, but you can't fix the volcano. Inside homes and businesses near Solfatara, there are stories of walls that feel strangely warm to the touch, especially after a swarm of shallow quakes. These are not official inspection results, but the kind of observations passed quietly from neighbor to neighbor. Insurance claims list cracked tiles, warped pipes, and storerooms that are now too damp or hot to use. For many, the signs are subtle but unsettling, reminders that the ground itself is shifting beneath their lives. Civil protection officials face impossible choices. The memory of the L'Aquila trial lingers when scientists were prosecuted for their risk statements after the 2009 earthquake. Now every public bulletin is weighed for legal risk as much as scientific accuracy. No one wants to trigger panic, and no one wants to be accused of false reassurance either. Official warnings stick to what can be measured, the number of earthquakes, the rate of uplift, and the temperature at the fumaroles. Timelines and probabilities are left unwritten, even as some scientists admit privately that if it were their own families, they would already have left Pozzuoli. Monitoring networks are dense, but not perfect. While Campi Flegri is among the world's most instrumented volcanoes, shallow events and sudden gas surges can still catch sensors off guard. Some stations have gone offline after being overwhelmed by heat or acid, and there are known blind spots in the urban maze. The limits of technology leave a margin for uncertainty, a gap between what is happening underground and what can be said with confidence above it. In this space, daily life continues, threaded through with anxiety and the unspoken question of how much warning anyone will truly get. Right now, more than 500,000 people live atop a restless caldera, where every new crack shifts the odds. The ground keeps rising, and the warning signs grow harder to ignore. Science can measure risk, but not certainty. The next decision may shape the fate of Naples for generations. What would you do in their place? Share your thoughts below.